Greetings, ladies and gentlemen. In this video, we're going to be talking about the harmonic series and the P series. Okay. Now, the harmonic series is basically a spe specific, a very specific series. It's just one uh, example of it. That's sigma one over n. Okay. And now, the good thing about harmonic series is that there's really no test involved with it. It is always divergent. Okay. So every time you see sigma one over n, there's always a divergent series. Now the next series is a p series, okay, and that's sigma one over n to the p power, okay. Now, what is the p power? Well, essentially, it's some constant value, okay. Uh, now the idea is that if p is greater than one, so if this constant over here, constant exponent, is greater than one, then your series is convergent. If it is between zero and one, then your series is divergent. Let's look at a couple of examples. If we have uh, sigma 1 over n to the second power, this is a p series, correct? And what is our p value? Well, our p is 2. 2 is greater than 1, therefore, the series is convergent. So it's as simple as that. It says, simple as looking at the test essentially all right uh, so that's that um, now let's let's go into uh, let's actually look at this one our harmonic series one over n right well why does it always diverge well the harmonic series is actually a p series okay it's just used so commonly in real world applications uh, that we that we just Gave it an, that uh, mathematician essentially gave it a name of its uh, of its own, and why is it a p series? Well, does this have an exponent? Yes, it does. N does have an exponent. Exponent there happens to be one. And if your exponent is one, and if p is less than or equal to equal to being the key, your series is divergent. Okay, and that's exactly why the harmonic series always diverges. Right. Uh, let's look at the last one. Again, these examples are very simple, but there's really not too much involved in analyzing the p-series. Okay. So if we have sigma 1 over n to the 3 halves, well, is 3 halves less than 1? Well, in decimal form, 3 halves comes out to be 1.5. So 3 halves actually is uh, greater than 1. Therefore, the series is convergent. Straightforward, right? OK. Now, sometimes students come in and ask me, why is it that uh, this, uh, this limit here is 0? Why is it not? Why can't it be from negative infinity to 1? Well, my answer is this. If something is less than 0, then essentially it's negative. And if p is negative, then we have a negative exponent. So for example, we, were, we used the uh, 1 over n squared, right? So down here, I will, you know, I'll uh, make this new one. Number 4, sigma 1 over n to the minus 2. OK, now p is not between uh, 0 and 1, and p is not greater than 1 because it's negative 2. So how can we work with this series? Let's rewrite. Key. Again, key to series is rewriting, rewriting, rewriting. This can be uh, using rules of exponents. This can be simplified into, let's see, if we have a negative exponent on the denominator, you can simply move it to the top and get rid of the negative sign. This will end up being n squared over 1, or simply sigma n squared. All right? Now, Sigma n squared looks nothing at all like a p-series. So how can we treat this series? Well, our first test always, whenever we can identify the series, is the nth term test for divergence, which simply states the limit n approaches infinity of this term here, of this a sub n term of n squared. And what, this, what does this equal out to be? This infinity squared, or in other words, simplifies down into infinity. Nth term test states that if you take the limit and approaches infinity of your series and it does not equal zero, your answer, your result of the limit does not equal zero, then you are divergent. Okay, therefore, by the nth term test, this is a 
divergent series, okay? Now the reason why I wanted to show you this example was because uh, was because of this specific p value. All right. Let's see. Now what if uh, for this example here, okay, number two right here, what if I change it a little bit? What if I said that this were now sigma? I'm just going to write uh, number new number two, just so that we can work with this. Sigma 2 over n. Well, this looks like the harmonic series, except that there's no 1 over there on top, right, on the numerator. So we can simplify this. We can simply say 2 times sigma 1 over, ten, uh, one over n. Uh, well, we can write the sigma inside, right, or the 2 inside, and because we factored out, and then we can bring it outside. Why can I bring it outside? Well, the rules of series say that if we have if we have sigma k times a sub n, k being any constant value, a sub n being any uh, series, this can be simplified down into uh, k, bring the k on the outside, times sigma a sub n. Okay, so that's what we did. We, did, we brought the two outside times sigma 1 over n. Again, this is a harmonic series. This is divergent. So I just wanted to show you the case with that. Now, I'm going to erase some of these examples, and I just want to show you a very key point where a lot of students have an issue. All right? And that's over here. That's what this problem. Well, that's what problems like this. And I'll do this one in red. Now, sigma 1 over n squared, a lot of students get this confused with sigma 1 half, or 1, excuse me, sigma 1 over 2 to the n. Now, 1 over 2 to the n is a geometric series. 1 to the n squared is a p series. So, key difference, um, this one has a constant as its power, this one has a variable term as its power. Again, uh, the bottom one is a geometric, okay, because this is simply ar to the n. If you want to see how it's, it follows the format of ar to the n, you can view our video about geometric series or ask a question on our page. 1 over n squared is a p-series because it has a, uh, it has a, uh, it has a constant exponent in its denominator, okay? Now, that example concludes our video about P-series. Again, if you have any questions whatsoever, please feel free to ask us.